it's, it's the 3rd of August. Yes. And Mickey Popel yes, is talking indeed. to us. Yes. And I'm going to ask you, Mickey, how, yeah. you, how you first started out with motor racing. Um, fairly simple, really, because I'd lost my leg in the army. And uh, where was that? In Germany. Right. And um, it just so happened that the person who lived opposite us in Burnham was a salesman for Rolls Royce here in Bristol. And uh, my father had said, you know, if you can get an MG for your 21st, you're very welcome. Mm. Because you couldn't, <laughs> he thought. And Ken Harkham, the chap who worked at the Bristol Motor Company, oh, he said, I know a lady who ordered one before the war. <laughs> so right. He said, leave it to me. And on the day of July the 8th, yes. uh, 1939, 1949, sorry, let's try 1959, get right. it right. This arrived outside the front gate. Brilliant. My father mm. nearly passed out. Uh, I was on crutches then. I hadn't got an artificial leg. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Buncombe, who's in the, one of the pictures, said, oh, that's no problem, Mick. He said, we'll fix up a hand clutch. So wow. I did my first hill climb up shoot shelf with a hand-operated clutch. <laughs> that was on, my introduction. On the steering wheel? On the steering wheel, under the steering wheel. Wow, just, like, just like a motorbike clutch? Yeah, or? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so that was the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then the next race was at Lulls Gate. Yes. Uh, I don't know how many races they had there. I think not many. Uh, and it was the, the, set, the circuit was just ex-RAF uh, and filthy, and I got partially blinded for about three weeks because of the dust. Gosh. Didn't wear goggles or anything sensible. It was quite abrasive, that runway dust, wasn't it? Oh, it dreadful. Was quite, quite a, quite yeah, well, you didn't. A I didn't or something. So that put me out for a little while. And then uh, I went to the second meeting at Castle Coombe, um, which I was lucky enough to come in third overall. Uh, and, the, and the bloke one lap in front of me was Michael Thorne in this Brooklyn's Riley. <laughs> so right. I didn't do badly. Right. And that's when I beat the first of the works TDs. Right. This one. So was your, 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 your TC by then was tuned? It, it was, yes. yes. And we cut as many bits off it as we could. And probably quite a bit lighter than, it was. A, uh, yeah, than a TD, the, the, even in standard. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, yes, yes quite yes, a bit lighter. Hefty and we'd done a bit to the engine. They've yeah. got the big carbs and so forth. And then that's when John Thornley, who was then the MD of uh, MGs, came up to me and said, oh, young Popel, I think you ought to change and have one of these new ones, you see. And I right. said, oh, I'd love one, John. But I said, my father gave me this car and there's no way I can afford a new one. Mm. And uh, I was working in London at the time. And as an aside and quite interesting, I was with Nash, with Calvinator, who then became Nash Calvinator, and yes. that was Nash Cars. Right. And they started importing this silly little dash, whatever it was, the tiny one. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, Donald Healy had been in touch with them because he wanted a bigger engine. Yes. And so I dealt with the importation of the Nash Healy, the engines. Right, right. right. Uh, and that was all very interesting, of course, because I was still uh, driving, doing rallies mostly and sprints, Brighton Rally. And then I had the call from University Motors. Could I pop in? <laughs> At lunchtime, I popped in. And these two cars were in the showroom. Right. And he said, which one would you like? I said, well, I'd rather have a UMG 403. And he said, well, that's fine, because Trevor Line, who was co-driving with me, said, Mr. Line can have that one, sir. But he said, you can't have them now, because they've got to go back to the factory. So they went back to the factory. They were prepared for the British Empire Trophy Race in the Isle of Man. And that's when uh, I was third in the in the one and a half litre class and that's when um, I met the Monkey Stable Boys which was Jim Mayers, Pat Griffiths, um, mainly them, uh, Mike Keane, uh, they're all sadly uh, deceased and uh, two in racing, three in racing accidents actually and we then decided that um, we should be you know, improving. The Leicester MGs were very good, yes. but we could see the opposition coming on. And that's when we met Gordon Benson in the pub, and that's when he designed that for us. And we went to Cyril Keefe, who was then, of course, yes. just building 500s. Yes. Uh, and, of course, we, we all knew Sterling quite well, me particularly. And um, so we then 
Because he was in the 500cc. That's he how he rose through his 500cc class. To absolutely. Start but that's when he, at, at uh, the British Empire Trophy race, he was driving Sid Green's Fraser Nash, yes. Le Mans Fraser Nash, and he was very, very quick. So this was a Keeft MG? That was a Keeft yes. MG, yes. Spe so special bodied? Yes, yeah, special bodied, aluminium framed car that, is, is, of course, people put two litre engines in them and all yes. sorts of things afterwards. And very much the streamlined, oh, yeah. Mila Melia sort yeah, of look. Yeah, it was. Look it was a lovely little car. Yeah. Very pretty. And we had the three, the see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil stickers right. on the side, which, funnily enough, the German press seemed to like. Right. Um, we had these wind-up monkeys on the counter. Oh, yes. And the next day in the local newspaper, it was a monkey's table that was on the front page. Right. Not the Mercedes, you see. <laughs> yes. So Alfred Newbar, who was, of course, running the MG, uh, the Mercedes team then, came along and made some remarks in German about what a load of trash we were, I think. <laughs> but but uh, that was, it was jolly good. And we managed to get one of the three cars home, we used to break wheels. Whereas the Jaguars used to break rear suspensions. So. I think these are magnesium, these are mag alloy wheels, they were, aren't they? Yes, yes. yes. Very Some, advanced for their day. They but, were, uh, but a bit brittle. But a thousand kilometres was a lot to ask of all these things because this car was very fast around the corners, so there was a lot yes. of stress. And we're looking at it on the Nürburgring, yeah. and, and even in this fo contemporary photo, we can see what the surface is like, which yeah. is but it's not rough. Much, not much better now. Not much better now, Because right, I was right. there last week. What time did you do? Uh, about 14 minutes. Okay, okay, Brian. <laughs> no, are we not allowed to time? It's not, it's not, a, it's not yeah. a race, it's not yeah, a race. No, we're not, a race. No, we're not no, allowed no, to time. I, but I did 12 laps. Okay. So, so okay. I did Gosh, 150 I that, miles odd and I loved it. Well, I know it like the back of my hand. So. And that's in your, your GTI now? That's in the GTI, yes. Yes, yes. yes. so it was lovely. This was my last visit to the ring this time. Yes. yes. But they say you'll probably have another last visit. Oh, right. <laughs> so... I, yeah, yeah. I, I think you, I suspect you will. Actually. Well, you've got to have it. But you've got to have it exclusivity, and it was Booker Track who um, took the ring. It was their tenth anniversary. Oh, yes. So I thought I'd go, and I did with the whole crowd of the, the gang that we go track driving. So. Uh, and from this Keeft yeah. MG, I mean, you can see the heritage, um, as I say, from the Mille Mille BMWs. Yes. Oh yes. But going through yes. to the, the, the Ferraris of the day. The, 155 International. Which they were, that year were Lancia, uh, Lancia Ferraris. Yes. And the Talbe Largos. Uh, and funny enough, there was one at Silverstone that was actually there that day. Um, because they used to be able to take their mug guards off yes. and do Grand Prix, put the mug guards off, back on, and the lights, and drive home yeah. afterwards, which the chap did last weekend. And this, oh, but yeah. then this mm. body line, this body line went on to be. I mean, I mean, the MGA was a very similar yes, line. Yes, it, it was. It was oh, yes. yes. It, was, it was almost swooping, copied. Sweeping line, um, yes. Because the uh, uh, Cliff Davis and Les Leston uh, had Keeft. I think they weren't Bristol's, I don't think. They weren't Bristol engines. I think they were, they were MG, basically, but the bigger ones, I mm, think. Mm, mm. Um, so that brings us to the early 50s. Yeah, um, in the, yeah, mid fifties. How did you how did you get involved with Bristol at that stage? Well, beca because of of our relative success at the ring. Yes. Uh, Trevor Line had bought the Chandlers in Salkham because oh, yes. he'd sold his wallpaper business and paint business and was brassed off. Mm -hmm. And we were in the pub, the the ferry in Salkham, and Trevor didn't know what to do with his life. And the, the woman behind the bar said, "Oh, well, the Chandlers is for sale, sir." So Trevor walked round the road, bought the Chandlers, mm. and of course looked after the White's boats. <laughs> right. So there was the link. There's the link. Yes. Right, right. And that's when I, I got involved with it as well. And uh, from there on, I think it was who you know, because yes. we'd had a certain amount of experience, obviously. Uh, and it was before both Mike Keane and Jim Mayers were killed. Mike Keane was killed at Goodwood in one of the first rear-engined uh, Cooper Climaxes mm. that seized up caught fire. Mm. So. And Jim Mayers was killed in a works two-litre Maserati in Dundrod. Yes, yes. And uh, I happened to be about, and I just got married when Mike was killed, and I thought, well, that's, you know, too many people were being killed. Because yeah. Peter Collins was a great friend of mine, yes, yes. and he was killed, obviously, and Mike Hawthorne, and it was just awful. So... Uh, I gave up, and really, 
after that uh, and this interlude with Bristol's, um, I had to give up. So you, you, you were taken on not as a works driver, but as a a private, a private yes, with, with works cars. Yes, with yeah. works cars. Because so afterwards, you know, I did rallies, sprints, hill climbs, everything. Yes. Uh, yes. And I won. Uh, not with this car, with the previous one, with the TC, hmm. uh, I won the thing called the Hanks Trophy, which was the first, uh, Hanks was chairman of MGs, yes. and he gave this trophy to the best driver of the year, yes. which yes. fortunately I won. And what, 50 years later, I went back and presented it to the next winner at Silverstone. Yes. So driving the, driving the 450 at Le Mans, you can... Um, for the qualifying yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, the qualifying. Very, very narrow track. Or frightening. Yes. My, I, I have a remembrance, yes. you know, and, and more than that I can't say, but it was going down the Mulsan straight. Um, I got passed by one of the Ferraris and the car went like that and like that. And I thought, Christ almighty, yes. how can you, you know, compete? when you're blown around the road by these boys. So the two-litre Bristol would have been doing approaching 150, I think. Well, well I didn't dare look. Oh, yes. <laughs> I and didn't dare look the, quicker the, than I'd ever been before. But the four-litre, four-and-a-half-litre ah, Ferrari would yes. be going 30, well, 40 miles an hour faster. Well, certainly even 200. Then. Yes. Certainly 200. Yes. Yes. So, and it's um, this business of the, the plastic cover and the wheel arch. I don't know whether it's true or not. Yes. It was? I, 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 <laughs> I don't know. You, but there was a... You could see the state of your rear tyre. Yes, so there was a hatch the, yes. in, the, in the rear wing. Yes. And you could see how much tyre tread the, there was left. The, exactly. Yes. And, that, and that's really my sort of vivid memory of yes. this thing. Yes, brilliant, brilliant. Um, but what happened after that, I don't know. I, I obviously, uh, um, I don't think anybody at Bristol's knew about my artificial leg in those right. days. Because Archie Scott Brown and I had to see the doctor every time before we raced. Yes. And Goodwood particularly, so not you two buckers again, yes. clear off, yes. you know. And um, it was my clutch foot, so it didn't really matter. But he didn't, he obviously didn't examine below the weight. <laughs> no, no, he didn't, no, no. no. Hello, what's so this? We told the, yes, we, well, we told the doctor, he knew. And uh, I think possibly that was one of the reasons that I was saying, so, well, you know, well done, but not this time. <laughs> so they kept you, they kept you in reserve. Oh, oh yes, they were, oh yes, they were very good. Um, but you know, I can't remember the manager. Yes, yes. Then. I don't know who it was. was and it so where? after and after the after he was the very ball, nice. after that <laughs> after that era, you moved yeah. into you moved away from track racing from Grand Prix. Yes. Uh, oh yes. You moved into well, well, track well track driving. Really, yeah, track yes. driving track and driving. And, and, and oh, rallies. and rallies. Yes. yes. I had a Raymond Mays converted uh, Zodiac. My that goodness. they used to do a lot of rallies in. Because they won uh, that, that won Monte Carlo eventually. Yes, it, it, it did. That, yes. that, that was a maze. Yes, I that think was so. Maze it was a maze conversion. Yes, yes. yes. Which was uh, used to break. Trouble is, we break half shafts for a pastime. We always had two in the boot. Gosh. <laughs> yes. Gosh. If you got through a rally without one or two half shafts going, it's a pretty good going. So lots yeah. of lots of torque. From oh, that. terrific! Yes. Two point yeah. six, two point eight liter. Two six. Two six, I think. Something yes. like that. Yes. yes. The Bristol Motor Company used to look after it. Right. They used to do. I mean, you know, head gaskets. Yes. Uh, yes. That was. An hour and a half at the most. Wow. Uh, well, the Rolls Royce boys down there, you see, used to love this. They used to get on my cars. And the t then the TD, the same. Because yeah. that used to drop valves. And uh, Well, after many years of it, breaking bristles, I can get the head off in, in 90 minutes. There you are. But it takes me <laughs> about, a little bit longer to get it back on. It takes me three, three weeks to get yeah, it back, back on. on yes. <laughs> oh, well, these boys were hot stuff, obviously, the Rolls Royce engineers. So your track driving career went on from there, and yes. it's continued to this it's day. It's continued to this day, yes. And uh, this year I've done uh, Where have you been five, this year? five circuits this year. Right, where about? Four in France, yes. Po, Po, uh, po um, first, Po Arno, then uh, we went up to Nagaro. Yes. Uh, and then we went to one of the two private circuits, yes. really. One is um, Marduclos. Yes. And the other one was Chateau Mornay. Yes. All yes. gorgeous circuits. Uh, now, I've been to them all, you know, several times, like the ring, really. Um, and we've done Dijon, we've done uh, Manicure, <laughs> we've done virtually all of them. And the lovely one in um, the circuit in Clermont. I can't remember what it's called now. So that was another one. Um, and God knows where else we've been, Paris. Um, 
for this. I time. went to, I went, it's quite interesting, I went to Rouse with Peter Collins. He had wrecked his Ferrari uh, in that race, and I said, oh, Peter, I'll come home with you. And actually, he enlisted me because he had a lot of marks, and you didn't sort of carry much money around with you in those days. Right. You know, Ten quid was about the limit of the, the, the uh, amount you were meant to carry. So I filled my artificial leg with bloody marks. Oh, was stuff, stuff so, full so of So there marks. was a second agenda. There was a second agenda. <laughs> so he, he borrowed... He was lent a Ferrari by a chap called Jean Luca, who owned one of the Paris newspapers. He wasn't short of a bob or two. Yes. And he was also the Met at the Mall. Right. Not, I think, then, but subsequently. And so we drove uh, from uh, the ring, and Peter said, come on, let's go to Reims. And we had a blast around Reims. Uh, and he said, but there is something special about this place. I said, oh, yeah. And he said, so we went into the village and he found, I think he was a butcher or something, who during the war had been the leader of the local Maquis. Right. And uh, Peter said, he'll show us something. And so we went to the circuit uh, and there was one stand left, I think. Uh, and there was just a, a gate, gate, an entrance in the middle that went straight through and out the other side. Yes. And so he said, you, you know, just wait a minute. So we went in and this bloke just pulled out a couple of stones from the wall uh, and in no time at all exposed a door and inside was the headquarters of the local Mackie and the Germans never found it. Right, right, right. Uh, but you had to watch points with them because they were a bit left wing to say the least, the oh, Mackie. Yes, yes. And uh, so that, then we blasted down to Paris and uh, stayed the night there caught the train back the next day but he I have vivid rem memories of sleeping in a deck chair which wasn't very good with an artificial leg but I did sleep and they had a club in, in Paris which I've never been able to trace but I'm, it's as clear as day called the Action okay. which must have been the French Racing Drivers Club a bit yes. like the steering wheel club in, in Soho yes. and uh, Peter said don't worry about the money he said these people will lend us whatever we want they'll buy us tickets right. everything because right. they know they'll be paid, yeah. paid back. So we got some money and tickets to a fairly dubious nightclub, bought to Sardine, and I don't know what it cost, quite a few francs. So anyway, Peter actually paid it all, because I, I had the money, yes. <laughs> I had the marks. <laughs> so that was, that was that, and of course subsequently got killed. But I do go, I haven't been for some time, because we... Uh, uh, the British Racing Drivers Club produced uh, with his parents a memorial window oh. in the church just outside Kidderminster. Mm -hmm. And um, so we go occasionally to make sure it's okay. And his wife, she doesn't go anymore, but she used to go every two years to look at the grave because his parents are married there as well. So it was all, you know, very romantic and, yes. and lovely in those days. Without Bernie. <laughs> Without Bernie. But there we are. Coming back to characters from those days, you uh, you must have met Tony Crook when he was driving. Oh yes, I, yes, yes, I knew him. Knew him. Yes. yes. I don't think you had. <laughs> Nobody dinner. liked him. Nobody liked him. No. Oh, no. well, he must have had one or two friends, obviously. But he, he he was just abrasive. You know, he could have been quite different. Yes. Uh, he was quite wealthy. Yes. Uh, he had these lovely showrooms in in, uh, in Kensington. Yes. And so sold a lot of Bristol's, I guess. Yes. Second, uh, second hand, I knew. But where, where Gene Simmons and Kerry Grant bought theirs, I don't know, probably from the factory. Oh, they couldn't, I should think. They probably had to buy them through Cook. So he's a good salesman, actually. Yes. He yes. was a good salesman. Well, he's, um, he's still, you know, he's still in and batting. Yes. And, um, yes. Only 90. Only, only 90. So yes. I'm afraid you've got to. Mm -hmm. And, and do you, you, you have a GTI, you have a, a Golf GTI, Mark II, Mark I, Mark II? No, Mark IV. Mark IV? Yes, 20 valve turbo. Oh, yes. 210 brake horsepower and proper brakes and stiffened body and lowered suspension and just a fun car. Yes. yes. Under 90, 1,000 miles. And I still haven't put any oil in it. What? Yes. It's amazing. Yes. But I think the, the, the clever part of chipping those cars is that the torque is all the way down. So you never really use the revs. No. Uh, no. And they are tough as old boots. They yeah. must so you've, you've, you've chipped yeah. it and it's been... Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, we did it from, what were they, standard 140 or something. We did 140, 180, 210. And 
quite extraordinary. You can, yeah. do, you can do that electronically, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, you can actually do them up to uh, 280. Yeah. <laughs> just, by, just by chipping? Yes. And Audi's done it um, with one of their competition engines, and all they did was put slightly stronger bolts in the big ends. Wise, wise. Yes. And sort of finely balanced the crank and clutch. Yes, yes. And that was it. Yes. Nothing yes. else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this bloke was absolutely astounded because John Jonathan Palmer has run the did he run the BM Audi did he run Audis the Palmer Audi oh Palmer yeah. Audis of course. that's right yes yes and he chipped one of theirs up to two hundred and eighty yes it's, it's weird <laughs> it's weird you know two hundred and ten to two hundred and eighty is a long way yes I mean I could go more but you've got to put in bigger intercooler. And that disfigures it. Oh, I can't be bothered with that. Mm -hmm. no, it goes faster than I can drive it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, that, you know, that's 911 territory. It was we, oh until, yes. until quite recently. Yes, you know, it was. Two, yes. Over 200 horsepower. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, no, a bit more than that now. Because yes, I drove a GT3 RS at the ring, and a friend of mine just bought. I yes. Was, I was a bit reticent, I have to say. And, uh, I mean, the torque on these things is just astronomic. But another friend of mine started converting Boxsters. Right. And he puts, uh, you can buy a Boxster on the internet if you like. Yeah, sure. And goes to Brook Speed. They replace the front suspension with a 911 suspension. Okay. Uh, they put a, fra a, a brace frame in it, race frame in it. Mm. And uh, they put some baffles in the sump. Mm. That's right. It, that's it. And that's about it. Goes like a rocket. And a bit of a chip, I suppose. No, no just the, nothing, because yeah, yeah. it's, what, 2.8 yes, 2 yes, litres or something. Yes, yes. No, it's just stunning. And the, the alteration at the front means that you can just stick the nose into a corner and the rest follows. Yes. But you'd yes. never think that of a boxer, because they were a bit maligned, to say the least of it. They mm. have improved them. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but uh, this, this thing was, I drove it at the ring, it was absolutely stunning. Quite frightening, actually, because you wouldn't think a boxer would go that quick. Uh, have you, you know? tried the Cayman? No, I haven't been allowed to try, try a Cayman. It's but sort of halfway between the box and the yes, 911, it but is, it's got yes. um, yeah, the electronic suspension, which, yes, you, which yeah, puts I, you into track. I don't like any of that. I like to feel where I'm going. Yes. You know. yes. So there we are. Mickey, that's absolutely, that's absolutely brilliant. Thank oh, you so good. much. Thank you very much good. indeed.